Hello, welcome to RC Video Reviews. In this video, I'm going to show you how to upgrade the multi-module firmware inside your radio. If you've ever upgraded Edge TX or Open TX on your radio and then clicked on model and gone into your model settings on the first page and scroll down to the internal RF module and external RF module space with that internal module on, if you see this status saying module update recommended, that's the developer saying that there are some things that have changed since your current version of firmware against the new version of firmware for the radio, the four in one module inside your radio. So it's time to update it. I'm gonna show you how to do that. It's a really simple process. Don't be afraid, it's not scary. And I do recommend on the firmware keeping up to speed because they do add new features in Edge TX that you'll wanna be able to take advantage of. For example, sorting your protocol list alphabetically. So bottom line, it's a good idea to keep your multi-module firmware at least corresponding with where you are on Edge. I would minimally recommend that you do that. Okay, to get started, you'll follow the link in the description. It's downloads.multimodule.org. And on that page, you'll go under multi-module selection and find your radio. In my case, I'm using a TX16S, but they've got other options. They've got DIY STM32 boards. They've got the Hobby Porter JP4 and one. There's some jumper options, including the jumper T16, the T18, even the Radio King is in here with the TX18. And of course, the Radio Master TX8, 12, 16. In my case, I'm using the TX16S. There is a call out I'll make too. Pay attention. You know, if you only have the TX16 SSE, that's not a foreign one. That's just a CC2500. That's the FreeSky chip. Make sure you pick the right one. So in my case, I'm using the standard foreign one module. I'll click Radio Master TX16S internal module four in one. On the right hand side under file filters, just pick the latest stable one. And for module type, in this case, it is an STM four in one. And under radio type, there are only two options, PPM and serial, we'll leave it on serial. And then I would recommend it, unless you really want a toy or you have a specific reason to look at pre-release versions or debug builds, like the developers are trying to help you with something, I would leave those options off. So just leave them off. And then once you've selected the correct filter, you'll come down here into the file list. And there are two things I want to show you in here. The first one is the binary itself. So I want the AETR version. So I use Aileron Elevator Throttle Rudder. If you use Rita or TAER, you can select those binaries and that's fine. And then for scripts, I wanna show you the scripts thing real quick. So when you upgrade your firmware, you do wanna download the new Lua scripts that go with it. And I'm gonna open that zip file and show you what it looks like. So you've got in the scripts folder that come with the multi-protocol firmware, you've got DSM forward programming, the Gropner hot Lua, multi-channel updater, the multi-config, multi-OLI Lua, and PID DSM Lua. All you have to do is take this scripts folder and drop it on the root of your SD card on your radio if you wanna update the Lua scripts that come with the multi-protocol firmware, okay? Simple little thing to do, just take the scripts folder, drop it in the root, you'll get some errors saying, hey, these files already exist, just overwrite them and you'll have updated your Lua scripts for the multi-protocol firmware, okay? But with that said, I'm gonna click on the 1.3.3.7 as of May 2nd, 2022, that is the latest firmware available. I'll click on that and download it. And now that's on my desktop. I'm gonna connect my radio to the top port. Now the radio's on in this case, so I have the radio on. I'm gonna take a USB-C cable and I'm gonna plug it into this top port of the radio right here. And then the radio will say, do you wanna use the joystick? SD card or USB serial, I wanna use USB storage. So I'll just click on USB storage. And when I do that, I'll get a window on my computer that'll pop up with a firmware folder. Now I wanna point out, you wanna be careful on here. Don't mess around in the folder that looks like this with firmware bin and firmware text. You don't fool around in there, just close that out. There's no practical use for you in there for users, okay? The folder you're looking for will look something like this. It'll have firmware, logs, models, radio screenshots. That's your SD card 
folder structure, and that's where we're gonna put the multi-protocol module firmware. So click on the firmware folder, and then just drag the download. This is the 1.3.3.7. We'll just drag that over here, and notice I've already got the firmware on my SD card, but I'm gonna replace it so you can see the whole process. There we go. Now the firmware binary is on my radio SD card on the TX16S, okay? So that's all we need for the computer. Now we can disconnect the cable up top. We'll just unplug that set it aside and we're gonna now go into our system button on our radio. So click on system and navigate over to this little icon right here. That's the file manager. So click page right and there's our firmware folder right there. It says firmware, click on that and then look for the file you just downloaded. It's MM STM serial AETR 1.3.3.7.bin. Okay, when you click on that, there's an option to flash internal multi. So click again and just let the radio do its thing. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up so you don't have to watch it clock across the screen and we'll come back after the speed up. Okay, when the firmware is successfully written to your MPM module, you'll get a notification that says flash is successful. You can then press return and that's the process, we're all done. So the next thing we'll do just to verify is we'll press the return button again press model and we'll scroll down to, we see the firmware option down here on the multi-protocol module. And you can see that we've got 1.3.3.7 and that status blinking message saying module update recommended, that's now gone. Another way you can check it if you're interested in these types of things is to hit the system button, page left to go to the hardware page, and then you can click on modules and you can see the internal module firmware right there as well, 1.3.3.7. Just another place you can check and get the same information. All right, that's it. That's how easy it is to keep your multi-module firmware updated. That's all I've got in this video. If you like this kind of content, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down there in the corner so you know when new videos hit the channel. That's all I've got for today. Take it easy. Hey, if you like the work I do here on RC Video Reviews, please consider joining me on Patreon. For about the price of a cup of coffee, you can help me keep making videos just like this one. If you'd like to help out, there's a link in the description and on your screen.